Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Forex PNL. <clears throat> Today is the uh, 15th of March 2024 and um, it's time for me to do my weekend Forex forecast for the upcoming week um, and I hope um, you guys bear with me. Last week I was not able to put out a video because I was um, really feeling ill, okay? Um, I just literally started getting myself um, a few days ago, all right? So I just wanted to put that out there. Sorry, guys. I, I Trust me, I really want to put out these videos every week. But of recent, I've just been falling ill and, um, you know, um, I, I kind of told you guys in the um, Telegram channel as well. So I'm um, sorry and I'm going forward. Hopefully, as far as I'm feeling good, guys, I'm going to put out these videos. Okay. All right, with that out of the way, guys, let's get the video started. But before we take a look at the um, technical analysis that we have for the week, let's take a look at the um, economical calendar that we have on Forex Factory for next week. And as you can see here, I have pretty much um, filtered this calendar for high impact news and bank holidays. And as you can see, next week is loaded. OK, the markets. Oh, my God. It's just a lot of. Um, you know it's just a lot of red you know high impact news on the calendar we do have um um industrial production coming on sunday from china and then we have monetary policy statements this high impact coming from the um japanese axis interest rates decision from australia uh, and then Bank of Japan press conference. Obviously, that is um, a high impact one, and that is usually um, Tuesday morning Eastern. And then we have the CPI again, another high impact coming from the Canadian axis. Uh, we have the federal funds rate, okay, coming from the United States and FOMC statement uh, press conference as well. So I mean, I there's no need going through all the um, you know the news that we have on the calendar. Just be aware that uh, well, we have enough items to give us um, some movements that pretty much has been lacking in the markets for the past few weeks. So okay, all right. So um, we do have um, you know Thursday the PMI is Thursday pretty much, and then we have the interest rates coming from the um, from um, from British axis. Pay attention to what we are expecting here: zero one eight compared to two one six. So um, there is a chance that this is going to be um, a key release in the markets okay because we're having some people um, move from one category to the other okay so um that's that's pretty much something to keep an eye on okay now um also flash services pmi coming from the united states axis and then on friday we do have retail sales coming from the um from the british axis so that being said guys pay attention to the financial um uh, calendar and um be very very careful when you're trading right around high impact news releases okay because we have a lot of them scheduled for next week all right so that's pretty much it from the um economical calendar now taking a look at the um the charts obviously kicking things off with dixie now we did get a bullish week um but now even though this week is bullish last week's scandal at least for the past uh well, let's say three weeks before this week we've been having bears 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 coming into these markets okay last week was a very bearish week okay and then this week yeah in my opinion it's looking more like a, a retracement week all right the, it's looking like the markets just retraced so even though this is a bullish candle and the week is bullish um at this point it is still very very bearish because what this could just be is a retracement for further continuations to the downside okay now if we take a look at the uh, daily charts what do you see here now in the daily charts we're having almost uh, markets giving us a very nice um structural movement uh you can see that the markets was pretty much making um higher highs and higher lows in this area all right so this is when the market was giving us like it wants to move to the upside okay we we're making higher highs and higher lows but then after this markets dipped into this demand zone area that we have here okay and just gave us a retracement and from there we got a massive push to the downside that took off this demand zone to the downside okay so right now the market is now pretty much in a retracement phase and chances are this area now is a significant supply zone area from where i will expect the markets again to start giving us further continuations to the downside okay so um this is kind of what i'm seeing right now in um the dixie um going into next week okay so maybe a little more um push to the upside just to tap into this um supply zone area and then from here i will expect the markets to continue pushing again to the downside so let's say keep an eye let's say 103.75 to 104.00 area anywhere right around there i would expect the bs to start coming into these markets okay all right so that's it for the dixie uh, next up is going to be US dollar Swiss francs. Now, for dollar francs, uh, what do we have here? Well, 
if I go to the weekly time frame, let me see what do we have. If I go to the weekly time frame, well, this one is looking ugly. It's pretty much looking like a range right now. Um, in the smaller time frames, you can see that for the past, will I say, five weeks or thereabouts, the market has not really made any particular movement. Okay, so right now it's looking like the market is stuck in a range, maybe in the daily or in the four hours time frame. Okay, now if we take a look at the um at the daily time frame you can easily start spotting that range that i am referring to with this being the top of the range okay and um obviously this being the bottom of the range in this area okay and as you can see here uh well this market is um bouncing off of demand zone areas you can see this demand zone that we have in this area that led to the break of this level of um, structure right there the market's dipped in the first time but could not quite take off this high we got a retracement into the demand zone again and you can see the bulls are coming in again all right so that being said we are inside this huge this range that we have right now on the daily charts okay this is the range that this market is trading on right now um again very nice reversal pattern you can see we had this pin bar formation and then two indecision days and then from there we got these massive explosions to the upside so in my opinion it's looking as if the market is probably going to find a way to make it towards the top of this range and then what happens from there will depend on maybe a lot on the fundamentals that we have i'm um, scheduled for next week so but right now we're inside this range um few courses of action here maybe the market gives a little pull back okay and then gives us that rotation to the upside maybe towards some 8900 and then maybe from there if if we're not ready to break to the upside yet that might be an area from where this market can easily again tumble towards the downside okay but um in the event that we do get a nice push and break above this level of resistance okay of the range then upon any pullbacks i'll be looking for demand zones that's form on the smaller time frames for further continuations to the upside okay so it all depends but right now i think personally i am favoring a bearish continuation in this particular um currency pair but i do believe that chances are we probably make it all the way to the top of the range before the markets will plummet again all right so that's it for us dollar swiss francs um next up is going to be euro us dollar now um for euro us dollar what do we have here if we take a look at the weekly candle this is now looking more bullish than bearish as you can see here uh the markets obviously gave us a tap into this demand zone area all right and uh well the markets gave us the first tap we took off and now second tap and you can see very nice reversal two pin bar formations and from there the bulls are now coming into this market you can see that um last week was a very nice bullish candle and in my own opinion this is most likely a retracement candle and then from here i will expect the bulls to start pushing back again for higher highs if we go into the daily time frame now in the daily time frame again uh, just like in the uh, case of dixie this is an opposite reversal pattern you can see how the market was busy scoring lower highs and lower lows in this particular part of the charts okay and then finally we bottom out here and from here the market is now reversing forming higher highs and higher lows and creating demand zones in the process okay so uh well in this case obviously this is the demand zone of interest that led to the break of this level of um, structure to the upside okay so right now um price is on its way to retrace to retest it uh let's say maybe let's say maybe around um 1.0850 area somewhere right around here the markets can easily tap 10850 and then from here any reversals in the smaller time frame in my opinion would be a high quality trade for further continuations to the upside okay so um let's see how this goes but this in my own opinion is a high quality trade that i'm going to be keeping an eye on next week to see how the market behaves off of this demand zone areas okay all right so that's it for uh euro dollar let me see in the four hours time frame do i have anything uh in the four hours time frame yes we do have this demand zone area okay uh you can see this is the demand zone area the markets kind of tapped the top of that demand zone and we reacted didn't make a new high and right now the market is trading deeper into this particular demand zone again so in my own opinion this demand zone right here is now weak and from here uh i would not be surprised if let's say the bs come into this market all right and push into that let's say 10850 area 108.25 area anywhere from right around here any reversals i'll be looking for an opportunity to go long for further continuations to the upside all right all right so that's it for um euro us dollar now next up is going to be british pounds and us dollar now for british pounds us dollar what do we see here well if we go into the weekly time frame again last week very bullish you can see we have this nice pin bar candle and then we have um a very nice bullish break 
literally creating a demand zone on the weekly chart because this right here closed above this level of um, structure that we have here okay so very nice push to the upside last week and again this week is a week of retracement in my own opinion and uh, well again we very have a very nice um, demand zone to keep an eye on very nice price action resistance 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 and finally notice how in this area of your charts we are no more forming lower lows right the market now forms a higher low a higher high higher low break of that trend line in momentum with a close a very nice momentum break okay so in my own opinion from right around here all i want to see right now is for this markets to give me a push into this particular uh demand zone area that we have anywhere from right around here let's say 126.50 area anywhere from right around here any reversals in the smaller time frame i'll be looking for an opportunity to go long for further continuations to the upside this is my preferred course of action when it comes to british pounds and us dollar i'm going into next week obviously these markets can easily break okay and if that happens it just there's no there's no big deal all right wait for demand supply for supply zones in this case now that form in the smaller time frame and take your trades off of those levels okay so that's pretty much it um, but right now technicals are supporting a bullish continuation all right so that's it for british pounds and us dollar next up is going to be oops one second next up is going to be australian dollar us dollar now quite similar to the uh, british pound some us dollar you can see how well we're tapping into this large demand zone area that we have here and the markets now give us two pin bars and we have a very nice bullish continuation last week this week again a week of retracement and uh, well um waiting for right now for bullish continuation you can see the clear reversal pattern lower lows lower lows bottom out higher low higher high higher low okay and right now the market is seeking another what higher loan by getting into this demand zone area that is if we get into this demand zone area right so anywhere from right around here in my own opinion um this market dips in let's say 6500 anywhere from right around there in my own opinion from there the bulls can start coming into this market and this can also easily make up for a very nice inverted head and shoulder pattern formation okay all right so that's it for australian dollar us dollar remember the markets can do anything but this is my preferred course of action in terms of price action that i'm seeing on my charts right now next up new zealand dollar us dollar this is just a sideways market guys i'm not going to waste my time on this pair you can see we move up we move down move up move down almost the same size of candles uh well i'm not so interested in this particular pair to be honest with you now us dollar canadian dollar now looking at us dollar canadian dollar if we go into the uh, let's say from the weekly actually uh we do have a very nice um bullish candle all right uh but at the same time we also have this nice bearish candle so if we go into the um daily charts what do we see well again the market has given us a break of this trend line to the upside okay and right now in my own opinion the market has given us a retracement okay you can see that uh well we're probably heading towards this origin candle right here so what I think will happen is let's say the market opens, we get a push to the upside into this origin condo, into let's say 1.3575 area, anywhere from right around here guys, any reversals, I will be looking for an opportunity to go short for further continuations to the downside, okay? That's pretty much my game plan in US dollar Canadian dollar. If you remember, I think it was um, last two weeks, uh, midweek forecast, I told you guys that, uh, well, upon the interest rate release from um, the Canadian axis, that uh, well if we do get a close and you know a very nice push to the downside in my opinion i'll be looking for uh that would be enough confirmation that this market is about to go short and i'll be looking for an opportunity to go short for further continuations to the downside okay all right next up is going to be us dollar japanese yen okay now us dollar japanese yen let me see what's going on in the weekly well uh the weekly seems to be bouncing off of this little area here it's not necessarily a, de a demand zone and the reason is because we didn't quite take out this previous swing highs that we have in this area okay but nonetheless um this is an area that the, the market is finding very sensitive and it's turning around all right now um in this case not much to say markets can easily give us a retracement back into this area that we have here and from here again we can start plummeting to the downside all right so um, be very very careful and remember we do have news high impact fundamentals scheduled for next week okay um that was going to be affecting both the yen and the um, us dollar so be very very careful with this pair 
Okay. Now, um, that being said, we can see that we have a very significant area here. This area that was working as demand, the markets dipped in and from there picked up orders, gave us a nice push to the upside, but didn't quite take up these previous highs. And from there, the market has now plummeted. So again, um, to narrow this thing down, this is obviously going to be um, a supply zone of interest right now. So personally, what I would prefer to see um, going into next week in UJ is maybe the market's giving me that tap into this particular uh, supply zone area. And then from there, give me a reversal pattern. I'll be looking for an opportunity to go short for further continuations to the downside. Okay. Now, in the event that that doesn't happen, because again, it must not happen. Remember, the yen crosses have just been almost perpetually bullish. Okay. For a while now. So if that doesn't happen and the markets begin to clearly give me a break above this resistance area, um, that might be an indication that we are getting some demands in the markets. Uh, so again, upon any pullbacks towards uh, demand zone areas that form on a smaller chart, I'll be looking for an opportunity to go long for further continuations to the upside. Okay, but right now, in terms of the technicals that I'm seeing on my charts, it's suggesting to be much more bearish. Okay, the last but not the least is going to be British pounds and um, Japanese yen. Now, so uh, for British pounds and Japanese yen, what do we have here now? Um, for British pounds Japanese yen, if we go into the weekly time frame, one second. If we go into the uh, weekly time frame, you'll notice that, well, we do have this demand zone area that led to the break of this level of um, structure to the upside. The market is dipped into that demand zone area, and you can see that from there, the bulls are now slowly coming into this market again. So, again, this can be enough to create a bullish continuation, okay? Remember, this is the weekly chart, so let's see how this um, goes. Now, um, if we take a look right now in the daily charts, what do we have? Uh, in the daily charts... Um, let me clean up my chart, guys, one second. In the daily charts, well, um, in terms of price action reading, this is not looking good for the bulls, okay, because this was um, a very nice push to the downside that took off this demand zone, all right? So even though we're getting a bullish push now, I'll be very, very careful, all right, uh, with what happens right around this area, okay? One second, let me show you this box right here. I'll be very careful with what happens in this box right here, okay? So um, be very, very careful, guys. Remember, it's a lot of fundamentals. Be very, very careful. But this will be my preferred course of action in um, GJ. A push to the upside into this right here. Let's say 190.50. And then from there, um, I'll be expecting a bearish continuation move. Okay? Now, let's take a look at the uh, forward time frame just to get an idea what we are talking about, right? So if we go into the uh, forward time frame. Oops, one second okay i got rusty <laughs> okay so this is the the price action that i'm looking at okay in british pounds and japanese yen so as you can see here obviously there's a clear level of our intraday resistance right around here and uh well the market has now broken that level and what do we want to see now a pullback into the demand zone that led to that break okay so if we take a look here this is that demand zone this right here that i have labeled all right, so what I want to see right now is for the markets to give me a push to the downside into this area right around here. And then from there, I'll be looking for what? Long opportunities in this particular um, currency pair. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Okay, I'll be keeping you guys posted in the midweek uh, Forex forecast that I usually release on Wednesdays. Okay, so um, stay tuned and uh, well, have a nice weekend. Cheers and bye-bye.